Okay, let's uh, welcome in Mike Morgan to Sports Talk once again for another edition of Morgan on the Move. Mike is brought to you by State Farm agent Gary Patterson for 35 years. Gary's been serving the real estate needs from Lugolf to Lexington, Columbia to Blythewood. Your auto home, life insurance, and business insurance can all be handled by Gary. Gary spends countless hours helping South Carolinians with all their insurance needs and making a difference in the community. Go check out GaryPatterson.net today, and Gary will go over the best plans for you and your family. That's GaryPatterson.net. Brought to you by Love Chevy. Act now for spectacular savings on the best selection of new Chevys. I-26 at Harbison and at LoveChevy.com. Together, let's drive. All right, Mike Morgan, back with us after a week of vacation. Morgan on the move. How was the vacation? Were you uh, were you on some uh, island somewhere, or did you did you leave the country? Yeah. What'd you do? Yeah, uh, I well, yeah, technically I was on an island, uh, Key West. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, been there Key once West, uh, for about fifteen minutes. Once, one time, one really? time. Yeah, yeah, I was on a cruise. Uh, yeah, my wife, she does these things sometimes, got us on a cruise from Tampa to Cuba. Went to Cuba, went to Havana, and stopped in Key West. Oh, wow. Okay, so this must have been recently if you were allowed in Havana. Uh, yeah. Let's see, must have been about six or seven years ago, maybe? Yeah, it had to be six or seven yeah. years ago. Um, yeah, it was that was pretty cool going into, well, first of all, Key West was very interesting. Uh, and then... Um, and, this, and then you couldn't top uh, spending a day in Havana, and and walking around that place. That was um, that was quite the experience. Yeah, well, you and uh, the Castros have quite a lot in common, uh, both being communists and all. Well, but, I thought uh, about you know staying and finding a village and just just staying over there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna try and find a room over at um, uh, doggone it. What's the name of the uh, the military? Uh, base uh, Guantanamo. 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 Yeah, I was gonna go visit Guantanamo Bay where they shot the scenes from uh, A Few Good Men, and uh, yeah, you know, find that wall that he was talking about. They, they, you, they, Lieutenant Weinberg. <laughs> continue. Who's gonna keep freedom. <laughs> All right, so uh, Calipari leaves Kentucky for Arkansas. Didn't see that coming. Uh, no, nobody did. Although I will say this, if I, if I really wanted to, uh, uh, make my name as a, uh, a scoop guy for, for about mm, a few hours on whatever day that was Saturday, Mm -hmm. I got a phone call from uh, one of my cohorts that I've worked with from time to time, Joe Klein. Oh yeah. 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 A long time NBA center. Played with Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Kobe Bryant, uh, all American at Arkansas back in the day. Uh, and Joe is still lives in Arkansas. He's a businessman. He's very plugged in. And he just text messaged me out of the blue, Mike. I'm here in Cal to Arkansas, and I immediately said, Joe. You got to stop day drinking. Yeah, right. I, I, you know, I, I I don't see that happening. Uh, he said, "Nope." I'm telling you, the owner of Tyson's Chicken is friends with Cal. They play golf, and he's got, uh, you know, he's a billionaire. Yeah, you and I both should have gotten into the uh, the fried chicken empire. I think the chicken business would have been a good way to go. Yes, it's it's not it's not bad money if you can uh, if you can start that bad boy up. Mm. And but he he swore up and down that. It's it's almost a done deal, and I said, "Well, I uh, <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it." Yeah. Well, he was right. He was a hundred percent right. He and I and that was before. I mean, the Arkansas and Cal were not reported as a possibility by anyone, by anyone. So, uh, yeah, no. It, I mean, obviously, I didn't know the connection between he and Mister Tyson. Uh, and uh, I, and I didn't know until now. Although I'm not, there's two things I'm not surprised about. 
Musselman leaving Arkansas because I had enough conversations with him that I just got a vibe he was ready to go. And that wasn't a money deal. That was a he'd rather be in California deal. Uh, okay, I, I get it. Uh, and then the Cal, what I what I didn't know is that Cal was uh, sending out feelers uh, for the last few months. Basically, he knew that you know uh, he could be on the hot seat and. Uh, it wasn't for a $33 million buyout, probably would have been let go. And so he was kind of sending feelers out there. You know how that works. You cover enough of these, Bill. You, you talk to your agent, and he talks to somebody else, mm-hmm. and da 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 So you've always got plausible deniability. You never actually talk directly. You're, you're not seen, you know, eating at uh, Doe's on Dixon Street in Fayetteville, for those that have been there. Mm. Um, and, and so I, I – I, I did not know that Cal was really looking at other jobs. Uh, so that, those two things were uh, were surprising to me. And, and I, I think now, Phil, <laughs> the fun really begins because Kentucky has basically gotten rejection letters from everybody uh, from Nate Oates to Chris Beard, if, again, if you believe reports, to uh, Billy Donovan, and as of today, Scott Drew. So I don't know who they're. I don't know who you're left with. I mean, this is a school that has to make, in the fans' eyes, a quote unquote home run hire. They will not accept anything less. They are not going to accept Billy Gillespie 2.0. Ain't going to happen. But who are you going to poach at this point? I think it's fascinating. Pretty evident that. The administration there at Kentucky caught off guard by this because it does not sound like they had a very good game plan in place, a succession plan in place in case something like this happened. I mean, Kentucky doesn't go fishing for candidates. They sit back and wait for top candidates to come to them. So it sounds to me like they, they were caught with their pants down here a little bit. Let me, let me make an analogy uh, to you. Uh, Dabo Sweeney. Okay. Dabo, two national titles, what, five or six consecutive college football playoffs. Uh, he came out – it took him a few years. Quite frankly, it took him longer than Cal. But he was on fire, right, mm-hmm. and, and, and could walk on water uh, at Clemson. Much like Cal, after going to four Final Fours and winning a national championship in 2012, could walk on water. They both have, uh, let's just say – uh, effervescent personalities that that uh, people seem to gravitate toward. Uh, they're involved in the community, and I think overall fans of those particular programs think that uh, they're they're good people. You know, Cal did a lot for the Kentucky community, a lot. That was one of his strengths. Dabo has has been uh, a guy that I think has made his bones doing the right thing at Clemson. But then all of a sudden, you stop winning to the level that you're used to. And uh, all of a sudden, and I'm not saying this is happening at Clemson. I'm trying to make an analogy as best I can. But let's just say uh, Clemson has another year where they don't win the ACC and they don't go to the even the expanded playoff, and there's talk. But, but you know, there's a big buyout. So Dabo and the AD, much like Cal and Mitch Barnhart in Kentucky, they go on a, t- a live press conference and they sit there, and even though there were rumors of a strained relationship, they have a kumbaya moment. Mm-hmm. You know, Dabo's happy at Clemson. The AD's happy to have him, and all is great in the world. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> a couple days later, uh, Dabo announces he's taking the head coaching job at, uh, I don't know, LSU, because Brian Kelly gets fired. Mm. Uh, that's what just happened to Kentucky. It, 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 you, you basically – you gave Cal uh, another life raft, in part because it's very expensive to fire him. You go out of your way to convince everybody that everything is great and we can't wait to have you back another year. And then a few days later, he says, oh, by the way, I'm gone. Mm. <laughs> I'm leaving for another SEC school. That's what happened. And, uh, yeah, I, I, would say, I would say it's safe to say that they didn't expect it. Now, a lot of Kentucky fans would tell you, you know what? Good. You just saved us $33 million. So go ahead and take the job 
and Wu Pig Suey. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's okay. We were we were ready for a change, and we were told we couldn't make it financially. Well, now we can. So some people are actually looking at this as a win-win, a win-win for Cal, a win-win for Kentucky, a win-win for both fan bases. And maybe they're all right. We'll just have to see how it uh, unfolds. Mike Morgan, Morgan on the move here tonight on Sports Talk with us tonight. Mike, one final follow-up on the Kentucky thing, and then we'll move forward. With the exception of Scott Drew, it seems they are ready to hire someone within the family in the SEC. So you ask the question, the next guy who's pretty good at moving around and staying one step ahead of the NCAA, would Bruce Pearl have any interest in leaving Auburn for Kentucky, do you think? Hmm. It's a fascinating name. It's come up. Uh, Look, here's the thing. When Kentucky calls you, you don't ignore the call. Right. You know, you you this is you you make sure you call and you hear what they have to say, because if people like Bruce Pearl uh, can win at Auburn and take them to a Final Four and win multiple SEC champions, it's not like Bruce has just been good for like one year. He's turned Auburn into one of the best home court advantages in college basketball at a national power. That seemed unfathomable, but. Bruce is smart enough to know, and I think Bruce is 60 now, that he's probably taken Auburn as far as it can go. And Auburn is never going to have – no one's ever going to have the resources in basketball that Kentucky has. You just don't. And so Bruce has always been with underdog programs. He took over Tennessee when it was a little bit messy. He took over Auburn when it was a train wreck. He worked at UW-Milwaukee, took them to a Sweet 16, won a national championship at Division II Southern Indiana. Maybe he, for once in his career, he'd like to have the keys to the Ferrari as opposed to the Prius. Hmm. And I, I, I would never say never because of that. Uh, Bruce is happy at Auburn. Him and John Cohen, the AD, have a very good relationship. But you can't ignore <laughs> What, what Kentucky has to offer if, in fact, they make an offer. What's wrong with the Prius? 45 miles to the gallon, <laughs> hybrid, saving the environment. What's wrong with the Prius? You, you did hear him say Ferrari for a Prius, right? You did hear the first part of that. Well, I hear, that's what Mike drives, those ESPN <laughs> announcers. They all drive Ferraris and Corvettes and Mustangs and Camaros. You know, the rest of you us know are what, driving you know Priuses. I drive whatever is av- available at the rental cow- counter in Tuscaloosa, in Starkville, <laughs> in Baton Rouge. That's what I spend most of my life driving. It's no no Ferraris at the national rental car. <laughs> Mike, if we may, for just a quick second, let's shift gears over to the Braves. We'll leave what happened today to the side. But sixteen to four, fans- they lose to the yeah. Mets. To the Mets, yeah. Should the Bra- how should, Thank maybe you, this is a better way to phrase it? How concerned should Braves fans be about the news regarding Spencer Strider? And any time you hear UCL uh, injury coming out, you immediately think Tommy John. Now he's been placed yeah. on the injured list, but I mean, how concerned should you be about him? Extremely. Um, I, this is a very deep team and a very deep staff, including the bullpen but you just took away your top, your ace, your number one, an all-star, a guy who led the league in wins and strikeouts, the only guy that showed up in the postseason on the mound in that series against Philadelphia, uh, extremely concerning. You mm-hmm. can't just go and replace him in, in a trade right now. And you can try, but chances are you're not getting a Spencer tr- a Strider. So, uh, look, it's not – it's not a nail in the coffin. The Braves will very much compete for their seventh consecutive divisional title. Uh, they still have the best lineup in the division, the best staff, and the, the best everything in that division. But if you're going to win a World Series, it's going to be really hard to do it without Spencer Strider. If you're going to get to a World Series, it'll be very hard to do it without Spencer Strider. Max Freed has not gotten off to a great start. He's your number two. So all of a sudden, you know, if, if, and, and most people think he's gone. Like he's going to be a high dollar free agent. Most people think he won't even be a Brave next year. So now what? I, I mean, you you take Strider out of that rotation, and a lot of dominoes uh, fall the wrong way. Uh, they, they, he's just irreplaceable, just like most aces are, unless you're like the Dodgers and you're printing money. Um, 
it's it's crippling. Now they're still going to have a great year. They're going to win a lot of games. They're going to be in the postseason, in my estimation. But I, I can't help but think six months down the road and saying, "Oh man, this is where you really wish you had Spencer Strider, and you don't." Mike, you're irreplaceable. No, the, you, people have tried. People have tried to yeah. replace you, and evidence Are proves. Are you bringing Bill Zach back? Is that what you're telling me? Am I getting evidence, for Bill Zach? Evidence proves <laughs> that you are irreplaceable. <laughs> Bill Zach, who got uh, attacked in the Cincinnati parking lot one time after a brave Cincinnati game, he called into the show. Oh, yeah, I didn't just know got that. out of the hospital, and it come, some guy stole my computer. Uh, we'll talk to you oh, next God. week. Have a great weekend. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks, Thank you. Mike.